Hello, I'm Cameron Gully, and in today's video, we're going to set up and explain a full factorial DOE with the influx process. A full factorial DOE is a type of design of experiments. It's an organized set of trials of factor combinations that model the effect of each factor versus each response variable. Influx DOEs typically vary plastic melt pressure, step time, PFA, and cooling time to model the effect against dimensions, cycle time, and part weight. Design of experiments, sample process settings, and an organized matrix, which allows for more information to be gathered at once, saving time and money. DOEs have many different variations, resolutions, and uses even outside of injection molding, but this video is going to focus on the full factorial version. DOEs have the most value when output data is continuous, such as dimensions, part weight, and cycle time. DOEs with outputs that have discrete data, such as visual ranking, go or no go, or low resolution instruments, like a ruler, require more samples in order to improve the predictive confidence of the model. Design experiments in Minitab can have up to 15 factors, but the number of DOE legs increases exponentially by the number of factors. Commonly, four factors are used, but more can be added if the application calls for it. For this video, we're going to focus on the full factorial DOE. A full factorial DOE with four factors is a 17 leg design with a center point. It runs all possible factor high and low combinations. The DOE estimates main effects and tests for factor interactions. It assumes linearity, but it can identify curvature, but is not able to model it. This structure is consistently ordered, but will be randomized to reduce noise and bias that could occur from ordered factor changes. Essentially, from our range finding earlier, we found that our four factors have high and low settings that all produce visually acceptable parts. When we take this and input it into Minitab, it breaks up the DOE into 17 legs. If you unrandomize that, you can see that run 1 compares all of the low settings. Run 16 compares all of the high settings. Each run then increases one factor and leaves the rest at the low setting. And then there are interaction factors where two factors are set to the high and the other two are set to the low. And it runs every combination of all of the settings. And then the very last run is our center point, which is very important to the full factorial design. The center point determines whether there is a linear response or a nonlinear response between the high and low settings per each output. This slide shows two graphs uh, that are main effects plots for a given dimension. As you can see that the center point is on this line. That tells you that this factor can accurately predict this dimension. On this graph, you see the center point is outside of this line, therefore there is a nonlinear response and the DOE would not be able to accurately predict this dimension. In this case, you should run a higher resolution DOE, like a response surface central composite design that can predict with curvature. So let's take our DOE window and open up Minitab. In Minitab, we're gonna go stat, DOE, factorial, create factorial design. In here, the default is two level factorial, which is what we want. And then we're gonna to go to number of factors and we're gonna select four. Then we're gonna hit designs, go to full factorial, which puts us at 16 runs. And then we're gonna add one center point. I leave the number of replicates at one and then I leave the number of blocks at one as well. Now we hit factors. Here's where we're gonna enter our low and high settings for all of our factors. So first is melt pressure, step time, PFA, cooling time. Then we're gonna enter in our low and high settings. For melt pressure is 6,000 and then 8,500, then 2.15 seconds to six seconds, to negative two to negative one for PFA, and then cooling, our low is four and our high is eight seconds. Then we're going to hit okay, and then we're gonna hit okay again. And then Minitab is going to generate and automatically randomize our DOE. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our DOE matrix and we're gonna copy it and we're gonna open up Excel and paste it in here. I wanna go ahead and center everything up, and then I wanna create a couple columns to collect data that's important about each individual run. To start, I like to grab cycle time, I like to grab part weight, I like to have time to cavity pressure, and I'll have a column or two just for visual defects that may appear during the DOE. I also like to add grid lines and some color coding to my DOE matrix, 
This isn't required, but it is something I like to do. Next, let's actually run the DOE. So we're gonna enter in these settings into our injection molding machine and influx controller. We're gonna allow this process to settle in and I like to see three to five curves overlay. That way you know that this process is consistent and is a representative sample for how this process would perform. Then you would record the cycle time part weight, time to cavity pressure, and any defects that appear. And then make sure that the part is properly named and labeled for your metrology team. Then rinse and repeat for each remaining DOE setting until you've completed the DOE experiment. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump to the completed DOE. We have all of our cycle times, part weights, and time to cavity pressures listed in our matrix. And then we have some dimensional data here for three dimensions generated for this video. Also, utilizing conditional formatting to highlight when the dimensions are in spec and when the dimensions are out of spec can help you determine some information from your DOE. For example, our right and left end walls, we only have a couple runs that we're able to get those dimensions in spec. But you can see with our front wall, we can't make this dimension out of spec. So this tells me when I go to analyze this DOE, we're gonna struggle with the left and right end wall and we should pay special attention to these dimensions. One thing we wanna make sure of is for run one, that the dimensional data is in the same column as run one. Same thing for two and all the way through all of the DOE runs. Formatting this data to the DOE matrix can be a little tricky, but you wanna make sure that it's correct in order for Minitab to analyze it. Next step. Let's copy this matrix and paste it back into Minitab. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and paste our completed DOE into Minitab and then analyze the design by going stat DOE factorial analyze factorial design. Now we're gonna select our responses. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and select everything and then hit terms. And then be sure to uncheck this box, which includes the center points in the model. This will be important for our response optimizer so we have full range of the window when we use that tool. Now let's go ahead and hit OK and then hit OK. Now it's generating a couple Pareto charts for us. Pareto charts show which factors have the largest impact on a given dimension. In this case, the combination of PFA and cooling time have the largest impact on part weight. And this red line is important because any factor that is above this red line has a statistically significant impact on that dimension. All right, now that we've analyzed the design, we can go back into the menu and go stat, DOE, factorial, and a couple new tools are now available. Factorial plots determine if there's curvature in your model, but the response optimizer is the most important. The response optimizer allows us to enter in a target or minimize or maximize, and it'll utilize multiple regression to generate a predictive model for us. In this case, we're gonna enter in our targets and then we're gonna hit setup. And then we're gonna enter in our lower specs and our upper specs for each response and then hit okay. From there, we're gonna hit okay again. Let's press okay and our response optimizer will generate. All right, we'll maximize this. Up here are your four process settings. In red, these align with where the cursor is on these curves. Over here, in blue, is your process outputs for your given dimensions, part weight, and cycle. As you drag these cursors around, the process will update both the settings and the outputs in real time. These gray areas indicate where if you drag the cursor, the process is no longer able to meet its targets. Therefore, your composite desirability will go to zero. But the closer you get to achieving your target, it gets closer to one. These little d here is for the individual dimension. This is how close your y equals is to your target. But the further away from it you get, the lower this number goes as well. We are able to move our cursors the full range of the settings because of unchecking that box earlier in the setup. Had we included the center points in our design, our cursors are locked to our highs and lows. Oftentimes, I'll have two or three different set of process parameters to test from the response optimizer. I'll have one focused on just improving the dimensions, I'll have one focused on optimizing for part weight, and then I'll have one optimizing for just cycle time. The next step is to enter those parameters into your injection molding machine and verify if they meet the success criteria for your project. If not, I would continue testing or maybe expand into a bigger DOE. All right, thank you guys for watching. That completes our video over the full factorial DOE. Thank you.